Tonight I'll be talking about the elusive and exorbitantly expensive white Canadian scroll brushes. I only have one, but I've tried two. I just wanted to show you the Koyudo packaging first before jumping into the review. So this is the box that it comes encased in. It says Kumano Fude in Japanese. You open it, it has this really pretty white paper with gold and silver flecks. And then the brush comes encased in plastic wrap and some like little paper stuff down here and then open. Yeah, so I just wanted to show that to those of you who, who have never seen Koyudo's limited edition packaging before. And now I can get into the review. According to Koyudo, the hair is a hot topic amongst artisans. Technically, these are limited edition. CD Japan will list the brushes as available while stock lasts. When it was released, there were 10 smalls and 20 larges. The smalls sold out within seven to eight minutes, which is like pretty impressive to me because the brush is not cheap. It's like over $200 and, and I don't know. I was genuinely shocked at how fast it sold out. The regular price of this small powder brush with the square handle is 36,000 yen, but Koyuro released this one with the chubby round handle on the bottom for a steel <clears throat> steel at 27,000 yen, which is approximately 245 US dollars with the current exchange rate. So there was another brush that also came out at the same time, which was the large with the longer handle and it only cost 3,000 yen more because it didn't have the makie print on it, which is the Sakura painting right here. So the Sakura actually adds a lot of, like a lot more value to the price of the brush. And I contemplated, uh, I can't talk. I contemplated <laughs> on getting the large, but I don't know, the, the S was good enough for me. So last summer when CD Japan released the blush brush with the square handle, it was 18,900 yen. And I just wanted to throw that out there for like price comparisons. From the photos I've seen online, I initially assumed the hair would be thin, floppy, airy, and fragile. Like I just didn't have a very good impression from all the photos that I saw, like especially because the large was so airy looking. It was just fluffed, fluffed up a lot. I recently got to try a friend's white Canadian squirrel blush brush. And from here on out, I'm just gonna refer to white Canadian squirrel as WCS because the name is so freaking long. Yeah, so I got to try her WCS blush brush and it blew me away. The hairs are softer than Canadian Squirrel and Canadian Squirrel, if you don't remember, is the caramel hair type. The hairs that are like brown and dark brown on the bottom, like lighter brown, like orange on the top and dark brown on the bottom. And it it freaking, I don't know, it just looks dirty to me, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into that more later. Um, it's also the white, the WCS hairs are also elastic and resilient. They're springy and it doesn't feel fragile like other squirrel, squirrel hair types. Like these two hair types definitely feel more resilient and elastic than let's say like gray, blue, and red squirrel. So they can handle being used directly on top of tacky bases and not clump. The blush brush is a flat, paddle shape but densely pa densely packed it's similarly shaped to my cs my canadian scroll blush brush but less rounded at the top and has more hair so this blush brush is very very rounded and it doesn't have like that much hair packed into the ferrule but the blush the wcs one is uh it's very square squared at the top and it had a lot more hair it was a lot denser okay so the WCS blush brush did feel, it feels very luxurious on the face. The only con is that it doesn't apply blush well. It's actually patchy while my Canadian scroll one applies and blends better. I would, lo I would most likely use the, the WCS blush brush for setting and finishing powder because it's, it just seems like a very multi-purpose type of brush, but not for blush. Anyways, back to the small powder brush right here. The specs and overall design of the brush is different from the one in the set. So there's a set that CD Japan usually sells for, um, on their website, but it's out of stock right now. They're out of square, square handles. I don't know, they've just been 
saying a lot of things of they're like either out of hair or out of scroll like square handles i don't know but usually that set the s is um the s is shaped differently from this single release one so this one has more hair thickness and and is more compact the hair thickness is 21 mm on this brush and the one in the set is only 16 mm so hair th thickness i'm assuming probably means like how much they pack into the ferrule and i think the one in the set is more airy due to that since the hairs have more spring and are thicker than gray, blue, red, and Kazan scroll, it's able to pick up firmer pressed products better, which is good. Um, in, but for me, like in order not to damage the bristles, I personally would not use them with really hard pressed products like Tarte blushes. But I did try it out with the extremely hard pressed Milani Rose Blush in Coral, Coral Cove in, uh, for reviewing purposes. So like I only tried it with the that particular blush because I wanted to you know try it with all types of blush formulas to do this review so I initially wanted wanted to use it like for just everything like to I wanted it to be multi-purpose but it's unfortunately it's not the head is an awkward shape to be used as a multi as a multi multi-purpose brush <laughs> oh, trying to talk so fast and okay so yeah, this is just, you can see how it looks like. The head is just very compact and the hairs are very like densely packed together. Here's the top. And I, so I tried it with blush, bronzer, contour, setting powder and finishing powder. So anything, powder related to your face I tried for it and as you can see let's see wait my stuff keeps moving hair yeah the, so the tips the I think like half of it or sometimes maybe more than half it's like it's got this like brown whitish brown beige color and then the rest is um like dark brown and flexibility is okay it's not like very inflexible okay so for blush the head is too thick to apply in a targeted area even when using it on the tips and the side so if I were to use it directly on my face like on the side like this it's too the shape is really awkward it's also like really really big so I don't care for it for blush and with bronzer, it's better than blush, but again, the head is too wide. Like, do you see how wide that is? <laughs> um, I can make it work for bronzer. Like if, if I didn't have another brush to work with at the time or, or whatever, like for whatever reason, like if I needed one multi-purpose brush, then you, yeah, I can make it work for bronzer. For setting powder, um, this is where it shines. I used it with the Makeup Forever Loose HD Setting Powder and it gave an Hourglass and Guerlain Meteorites finish. My skin looked incredible afterwards, so I do really, really love it for setting powder. And surprisingly, it applies finishing powder just okay, which is pretty funny. <laughs> like it, it, I feel like it, it like amps up setting powders, but then for finishing powders, it doesn't really do anything. I didn't see much of a difference before and after applying finishing powder with it. So I do really like this brush and I'm glad I was able to try the hair type out because it made me change my opinion on it. And yeah, if you ever are interested or curious about trying this particular hair type, go ahead. I, I would just say go ahead. It's like, it's great. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.